<coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man walah. Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana anaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Allahumma wa tub alayna anaka anta al-tawab al-rahim. Subhanaka la nahsi thamaa'an alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik anta al-muqaddim wa anta al-muakhir wa anta ala kulli shayin qadir. Allahumma ja'al al-jam'ana hadha jam'an marhuma wa al-tafarruqa ba'dahu tafarruqa ma'asuma wa la tad'afina shaqiyya wa la mahruma. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Respected brothers and sisters in Iman, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Last Ramadan, I had uh, uh, like an online program. I was streaming on the Facebook, a personal program for me. It was in Arabic, I called it Rayyih Galbak. It's like give comfort to your heart or relax your heart. So I, I was asking the people some questions and we do interactions depending on the replies and reactions of the people. One of the questions was if today was the last day in your life or the last few hours in your life what is or what are the most important things you will do as top priority? Now, I can't remember what was the number who was interacting with me, but most likely there were hundreds, if not thousands. The vast majority of them, they replied with two answers. Nearly 70 to 90% of them, just two answers. Answer number one, the prayer. Some of them said, I will do the sujood, till Allah takes my soul. <laughs> Some of them, they said, I will return back to the Salah because he or she does not <laughs> pray Aslan. <laughs> Alhamdulillah ala ni'mat al-Islam. Some of them, they said, I will fill the gap of shortcomings of the prayer between me and Allah. The point, most of them, they focused, number one, on the Salah, the prayer. The second priority was, I will fix my relations with my parents. <laughs> The majority of them. So, so I asked the question randomly, and just for your information, the people in my page, they are from 50 countries, <laughs> about 3 million. <laughs> so random question, it will be a high authentic statistics about reality, because it's not a restricted one, it's just an open Facebook one. I was asking hundreds and thousands of people, they are from tens of countries without any kind of pre preparation. So when the majority say prayer and my parents, you can tell something. So I'm standing here before you in the coming just few minutes to remind myself and your respected self about these two important factors in our life. You know, I will not remind you with something you already know. The first thing, as a believer, after Iman, you will be asked is your prayer. Number one, if it's okay, everything else, inshallah, will be okay. If it's not, as if it is the visa, as if it's the passport, as if it's the permit, <laughs> anything else later could maybe does not mean anything if the prayer is not valid. So let's, let's use this beautiful opportunity of Ramadan to fix our prayer. I mean by fix our prayer, I'm not talking about the fiqh aspect, how to do the ruku, which is important, but I'm talking about the khushu, the relation, the preparation. Let the prayer be, as much as you can, one of the most pleasure times in your day. But how? Just quick technical things. Don't pray if you are hungry. Please, eat. Don't, and by the way, this is part of the sunnah. <laughs> Don't, if you need to go to the washroom, okay, go to the washroom, renew your wudu and don't pray in a hurry. Don't let the prayer the last of your priorities. You do everything, then a quick before doing something, just that's it. You will not have the cream of the prayer. Pray in a place you love it at your home. A place. Refresh the air. Put a perfume. Comb your hair. Have a nice dress. Have renew the wudu if you are not that well, if you are more relaxed or something, to refresh your mind and your heart. Do some technicalities such as take a rest, go to the washroom, wash your face, put perfume, comb your hair, stay in a place that you like. 
avoid any kind of disturbance. Don't pray while the people making noise if you can, if you have. You can afford to find a relaxed place, for example. Do as much as you can. Stay after the prayer and do the sunnah of doing the tasbih. 333 times, subhanallah, 33 times, alhamdulillah, 33 times, la ilaha illa allahu akbar. Feel the beauty of staying and having the khalwa. With, by the way, by the way, prayer is a khalwa with Allah. <laughs> it is. Because simply, once you say, maybe most of you, even non-Arabs, hear this word. We say, when you say Allahu Akbar for the prayer, we call it takbiratul tahrim. I hear, you hear this. Why it's called tahrim? It's the tahrim from the word tahrim, hurma. Tahrim what? Once you say Allahu Akbar, everything is prohibited except what relates to the prayer. As if you have opened like a special meeting with Allah. Everything else is, is prohibited. Eating is prohibited. Laughing is prohibited. Moving is prohibited. Redirection, redirection of your face and your chest is prohibited. It will be, make your prayer invalid. If you brought your wudu, it's, it's not allowed unless it's against your will. You can't eat, you can't drink, you can't walk, you can't speak, you can't laugh, you can't... Everything is prohibited. Why? Takbir tahrim. Why? Because I'm, in our simple words, in a special meeting with Allah. So please, let's review. Do we evaluate our prayer in this way or not? I'm just making benefit of those big number of people when I ask them, if this is your last day or last hour, what would you do? Nearly the majority, they said prayer. Number two, and I'll finish with this, or till Sheikh Abdul Aziz comes, my parents. I know, I know, I know some of you, especially some youth, they say, Sheikh, please, 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 not again, please. You don't know my father. Sheikh, please, you don't know my mother. My mother and my father, they are ready to let you be mad and crazy, please, not, not again. Habibi, please know it directly. Whatever bad your father or your mother is, she, he, will not be more bad than the mushrik who's insisting to let you be a mushrik 24-7. <laughs> Whatever. Yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though the only thing that Allah does not forgive in the Quran and in Islam, in Allah, la yaghfiru ay yushraka bihi, wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika li man yasha, which means Allah does not forgive any sin. Uh, sorry, Allah will forgive any sin except if someone passed away with shirk, none forgettable. It's khalas. Final destination to the hellfire. Yet, if God forbid your parents or my parents were both of them mushrikeen, it's not just mushrikeen sitting alone in the corner. No, 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 no. <laughs> they are very energetic, very active, doing their best 24-7 to make me a mushrik. Yet, I have to respect them. Look, I have to, I not to agree with them, I have no right to scream, to yell in their faces. No right to say bad words in their faces. If, even the Quran said, وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ The word off in Arabic, it's an expression of the least expression of showing rejection or feel unhappy. The least. Which, uff. That's it. It's, it's not an action, it's just, just to show. It is kabira. It is a major sin. Equal to committing zina. <laughs> So let's review our relation with our parents. Some of us, طبعاً, you know, the majority of us, we are immigrants. Maybe most of us, our parents, back home. Maybe for many reasons, disconnected. For many social reasons, we don't contact, we don't speak, we don't discuss, we don't respect, we don't send money if we can. For many reasons, please. Review it again. Allah says, وَإِن جَهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ I'm not doing a conclusion from my own. Allah literally says, if they were mushrikeen, doing their best to make you a mushrik, yet, فَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعَا فَلَا تَقُوا يَا اللَّهُ مَسَعِيْ سَيْدُ مُحَمَّدْ No, وَنْ جَهَا دَكَ عَلَىٰ نَشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطَعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَا Don't obey them in what they call you to do from the shirk. However, be kind with them. So we have no option, by the way. Does this mean my father, my mother, will not be held accountable? No, no, he will. Does this mean every single father and mother, they are angels? No. 
Is, it, is there a possibility that my father or my mother is a bad in the sight of Allah? Yes. Is it possible my parents might go to Jahannam? Yes. But it's not my job to do this. <laughs> I have no option, by the way, no option except respect. <laughs> no option. That this, this does not mean I have no right to discuss politely, to reject politely, to criticize in the best manner. But I have no right to be rude or to break the ties or to be dealing with them in any kind of bad manners. Why I'm saying that, as I told you, the majority of the people, the majority, the only two things came to their minds, just the prayer and their parents. So let's review, let's fix, and Ramadan is the best golden opportunity, as I told you, we do like, we go back to the manufacturer settings, everything. Take a decision, think about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you, if there is a problem between you and them, forgive. If you can fix it, fix it. If you can't fix it because you are young and you are very old, they will not change. At least forgive and be nice with them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be a role model for your brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa